Graham Potter's currently struggling massively at Chelsea, but have you ever wondered how he reached the top of English football? He is well known for his time at clubs such as Brighton and Swansea, but did you know that the 47-year-old first made a name for himself in the northern parts of Scandinavia? How did the manager end up with an unlimited transfer budget just a couple of years later? This is the untold story of Graham Potter, the struggling Chelsea manager who made history in Sweden. The Unorthodox Choice Graham Potter was born in the English town of Solihull in 1975. He began his mediocre playing career at Birmingham before joining Stoke and later Southampton, where he experienced his top moment as a player. As a former left back, he came on as a substitute for Southampton in their famous 6-3 victory over Manchester United, playing against the likes of David Beckham, Eric Cantona, and Paul Scholes. Not much else needs to be said about his playing career. After playing over 300 games in the Football League, Potter retired at the League Two club Macclesfield in 2005. Despite not having played football at a top level, Potter's now one of the best-known managers in the game. His road to the top has not been easy or conventional. Shortly after his playing career ended, he graduated with a degree in social science. At the start of his managerial career, he worked, among other things, as a youth coach for the University of Hull and as a technical director for Ghana's women's national team. In 2008, he got his first managerial job when he landed the position at Leeds Carnegie, a team that played in the 10th level of the English football pyramid. He stayed there for years before making the unorthodox choice to join Swedish side Ostersund, a fourth-tier team in the northern parts of the country. The next eight years of Potter's career would end up being one of the biggest underdog stories in Europe. Grassroots Football to Europe Potter took over the struggling Ostershund in January 2011, a move that raised a lot of eyebrows at the time in and around England. It was later revealed that he got the job through Graham Jones, a good friend of his, who recommended Potter as a candidate when he met the Swedish side and a friendly. The 47-year-old arrived in the country with high expectations, and in his first two years, he led the team to promotion to the Super Etan, or the second division. Under Potter's leadership, Ostershund continued to impress and stabilize themselves in the division before achieving promotion to Alsvenskan in 2015. The team had never before reached the top flight of Sweden. In the second year, they won the cup after beating North Sherping 4-1 in the final which qualified them for the Europa League qualifications. Their first opponent was none other than Galatasaray, the massive club from Turkey. They struggled against Potter's side, and Ostershund ended up winning 3-1 on aggregate. The Turkish supporters, who had been very hostile at the beginning, rose up and applauded us off the pitch, said Daniel Kinberg, the former Ostershund chairman. Graham Potter and Ostershund reached the group stage of the competition and ended up in a group with Hertha Berlin. Athletic Bilbao, and Zoria Luhansk. His team beat Hertha Berlin and drew Athletic Bilbao, securing a spot in the knockout stages of the competition, just seven years after being a semi-professional club. The Swedes ended up meeting Arsenal and were knocked out, but no one can take away Ostershund's 2-1 win at the Emirates. The match is known as one of the biggest upsets in the history of European football. It wasn't always easy, we had some tough moments and setbacks, but we stuck to our principles and kept working hard," Potter later said about his stay in Sweden. He left the club and returned to England in the summer of 2018. The Big Stage Graham Potter joined newly demoted Swansea at the championship, and although his time at the club was short, his success story continued. The 47-year-old only stayed at the club for one year, securing 10th place in England's second division. He also managed to reach the FA Cup quarterfinals, but lost in the end to Manchester City. In the summer of 2019, Brighton was searching for a new manager, and they landed on Potter, who had shown great potential in both Ostershund and Swansea. He managed to avoid relegation for two seasons, playing really good football during that time. In his third and last full season at Brighton, the team started to climb up the table, and he managed to land the team in 10th place, just five points shy of a European spot. Potter started the 2022-2023 season with Brighton very well and was en route to a European spot when the new Chelsea owner, Todd Bowley, wanted him at Stamford Bridge. Thomas Tuchel was fired and Potter was given a five-year contract. 
According to Transfermarkt, Chelsea paid out £16 million to Brighton for the 47-year-old. However, his Chelsea career did not start as well as his previous jobs. The team struggled throughout the fall, and he ended up losing 1-4 to Brighton, his former team. Chelsea owner Todd Bowley opened his wallet in the January transfer window this year, buying stars like Fernandez, Mudrik, and Felix. However, the record window still not worked out for Potter, and his team still struggling at 10th in the Premier League. The supporters want the manager gone, but can he turn it around? Potter's never had the benefit of the doubt in his career, but he's always ended up on the right track after a while. Does he deserve that chance at Chelsea? He's shown great potential at Swansea, Brighton, and Ostershund, but is it too big a task to turn around the Blues from London? Time will tell. Thanks for watching this video, and make sure to follow and subscribe for future videos from Untold Football. Do you have any ideas for an untold or interesting story in the footballing world? Please leave a comment after the video. We are here for the Untold Football Stories.